This afternoon, the vice president and attorney general made a big announcement about a program to crack cold cases around the country, joining Manhattan's top prosecutor to tackle the rape kit backlog. During the press conference, the vice president said, jurisdictions are beginning to see the light, beginning to understand that in the process, we solve hundreds and thousands of other cases. The effort funds grants so that local police and investigators can test rape kits that have gone untested in some cases for years. Then that new evidence can help authorities solve these crimes and deliver justice to one victim in Detroit, as NBC's Kate Snow reports today. I would just like to say to the other survivors out there that may be sitting where I was sitting once upon a time waiting for that phone call, don't give up hope. Seeing a person who did that to you will really make you feel, it'll make you feel good, you know, it'll make you feel like justice was finally served. One of the most unusual parts of today's announcement is the source of this funding. Manhattan DA Cyrus Vance took money from a bank settlement for sanctions violations and offered it up to investigators around the country. DA Vance joins us now. Good day to you. Hello, Larry. What moved you to try to do something unusual here, both in taking these bank penalty funds, putting them towards these rape investigations, and doing it outside of your jurisdiction, doing it around the country? Well, first of all, Ari, the reality is, as you were stating, that women around the country have been uh, undergoing these invasive exams after sexual assault, uh, which are designed to capture physical evidence that and to look for DA in that physical evidence and determine whether there is someone incarcerated or with a criminal record uh, who is actually responsible for that crime. There are today hundreds of thousands of rape kits in shelves and police stations and warehouses around the country that have not been tested. It's a, frankly, it's, a, it's an injustice uh, to the, the victims, women and men, who undergo both the sexual assault and the examination. So the, op the opportunity for us is to right a wrong, and we do it because we know it works. And when Manhattan decided to eliminate its rape kit backlog between two, uh, 2000 and 2003, we ultimately tested 17,000 backlogged hits. We got 670 hits to the national database, which resulted in 49 indictments in Manhattan alone. And Houston, this year, uh, so had... That's, that's 49 prosecutions of alleged rapists that you would not otherwise have. Exactly. And Houston, just last year, tested 6,000 kits, got 850 matches to the national database, and developed 29 prosecutions. So people should have confidence. Number one, this is going to solve cases. It's going to bring justice to, to victims who've been waiting for it for years. And in the case of Manhattan, I'm supporting it because this is really a national issue. A rapist who rapes in Manhattan and leaves his DNA there is very likely to strike in another state. And if in Cal California that individual is caught in another crime or another felony, we're going to be able to solve New York state crimes around the country. I'm certain of it. But I'm very proud that our office, in partnership with the federal government, is able to do something positive, needed, immediate to deal with what I think is just a tragedy. You, you mentioned that, that federal partnership. I want to read more from Attorney General yeah. Loretta Lynch, who you were with today along with Vice President Biden. She says anyone who's felt isolated and afraid for anyone that's lost faith or lost hope as a result of a sex crime our pledge to you we will not forget you we will not abandon you your peace of mind and your security are top priorities for DOJ you are not alone not now not ever again uh, she is a very measured uh, prosecutor as you know this is as heartfelt uh, as some have seen her uh, in that she's speaking to something that goes beyond the law it goes to a feeling that many women have that prosecutors and the legal system doesn't work well for them when they are victims of sex crimes. I think the fact, Ari, that we have a situation where thousands of rape kits are untested for years, if not decades, speaks to the question, are we treating victims of crime who are women as seriously as victims as we should. So I agree with the Attorney General's comments. And I can't tell you, Ari, when we make those phone calls to women after we have a hit on a case in which they're the victim, to tell them that something they've been living with for five or 10 years, we've now found the individual, uh, there's a range of emotions in their reactions, but they all say, I can't believe you're still working on this. I thought, working I'm on an old working, case. Working on the old yeah. case. I thought I'd been forgotten about. Uh, the Attorney General also making other big news, front page of the Times, and talked about a lot today, that they want to move from just holding banks accountable, something I mentioned you've done, uh, to actually focusing on prosecuting individual bankers. I mean, this has been a debate for years. Number one, why did it take until now for the Justice Department to say that? Number two, uh, what do you think of this shift, and what are you doing in, in your capacity, a different jurisdiction, uh, on these financial crimes? 
Uh, Ari, as far as our office goes, we will, in any white collar investigation, move where the evidence points to. And at the end of the investigation, what the evidence supports in terms of a charging decision. In a number of these foreign bank uh, cases, for example, evidence was overseas. Uh, identification of individuals, historical actions years ago was difficult to do. Uh, but we do charge individuals in uh, white collar fraud investigations, as does the federal government. So I look at the announcement, as I understand it, by the Attorney General, not necessarily as a brand new policy, but reminding the Justice Department of its commitment uh, where there is evidence and where charges can be brought and you have a large financial fraud that they should be really looking at holding individuals accountable. Uh, you work with New York police day in and day out. Uh, they're under fire right now for this mistaken arrest and allegations of basically misconduct, excessive force against James Blake, right. uh, a famed and, and beloved uh, tennis player here. Um, what do you make of that happening even to, to someone that people think was obviously misidentified and beyond the internal review at NYPD, is that the kind of case that your office is going to look at? Well, first of all, I must say I don't know the facts of that case in detail, and I, I understand what I've read in the paper. Well, he said publicly, and the police haven't denied it, that he was grabbed. The police didn't identify themselves, according to him, that he was thrown to the ground, mm -hmm. and then when they were able to identify him, he was released, uh, and the NYPD saying there's an internal review. Yeah. Well, our office has always investigated police misconduct where we have seen it and if we believe it is criminal, we've proceeded to charge. It's happened in 16 or 17 police officers cases since I've been DA. Uh, I can't speak to whether or not this will result in a criminal investigation by our office, but I'm certain we're going to have more conversations with the commissioner about it. Uh, and obviously, if police officers are engaged in systemic misconduct uh, or conduct which is outrageous, this is a concern for the police commissioner, it's a concern for the citizenry, and it's a concern for me. All right, Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance, on a busy day with you, we, we thank you for running from the Attorney General and the Vice President to join us. Appreciate it's it. It's great to be here, and thanks for your interest. Of course.